Top Shot champion Chris Chang on his $100,000 fundraiser to help prevent gun suicides. That and more on this episode of the Weekly Video Podcast. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Weekly Reload Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Gutowski. I'm also a CNN contributor and the founder of TheReload.com, where you can head over and sign up for our free weekly newsletter today if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with guns in America. You can, of course, also buy a membership to The Reload if you want to get exclusive access to hundreds of pieces of analysis and stories that you won't find anywhere else. You also get this podcast day early and the opportunity to appear on the show in a member segment. And of course, the money that you pay in with your dues is how we operate this place. So we could not do it otherwise. Uh, that is how we stay independent and uh, how we're able to bring you informed, sober, serious reporting on guns and uh, gun politics, gun culture, gun everything in the United States. So um, this week, we are actually going to be talking about a very serious subject, uh, which is gun suicide. And efforts to uh, reduce the number of gun suicides, especially through a particular fundraising campaign that is happening right now that is being led by our guest, uh, Chris Chang. Welcome welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, can you tell people, just start off a little bit of your background. You know, you, you've uh, had this, this great background as a, a, a champion shooter, right? Yeah, indeed. Uh, so I'm History Channel's Top Shot Season 4 champion. And uh, for those who haven't seen Top Shot, it was this reality show uh, marksmanship competition where 18 marksmen from all walks of life competed for $100,000 and the title of Top Shot. And we shot these incredible weapons and these amazing challenges. And uh, even though my background was a self-taught amateur my competitors were all professional, um, you know, military, law enforcement, Olympic shooters, and lifelong hunters. Uh, but I trained incredibly hard, and uh, I ended up winning my season. And I was working at Google at the time, so my my background is in the tech industry. But uh, after winning Top Shot back in 2012, I quit my job at Google and came into the firearms industry. And knowing not a single person and just wanting to see what is this whole uh, gun culture and, and firearms industry all about. Um, Bass Pro Shops was my sponsor who uh, flew me all across the country uh, shooting in competitions, uh, doing grand store openings and, and meeting some really wonderful Americans all across the country. And yeah. um, uh, it's it's just changed yeah, my life. and. And along the way there, you you got connected with uh, Walk the Talk America, which we've actually had uh, one of the founders on the show a couple of years ago to, to discuss their efforts with not just uh, suicide prevention, but also mental health uh, treatment for, for gun owners and things of that nature and, and trying to connect sort of the gun, on, gun owning world with the mental health uh, professional community. Uh, it keep, and so now you're you're working together with them on a fundraiser, right? Can you tell people a little bit about what exactly is going on there? Yeah, I'm really excited to announce a fundraising challenge for Walk the Talk America. And our goal is to raise $100,000 between now and May 8th. And uh, I'm personally donating $5,000, which will be used to match donations of $500 or less. And uh, hopefully, right, we'll get to that $100,000 goal by May 8th. And so for those of you that aren't familiar with Walk the Talk America, they're focused on mental health and providing not only free mental health screenings for either gun owners or anybody who goes to their website at WTTA.org. You can take a free mental health screening. And if you need to get connected to mental health resources, Walk the Talk America helps uh, accomplish that. The other big piece that WTTA or Walk the Talk America, uh, one thing that they also work on is educating frontline mental health practitioners and helping them understand gun culture and Second Amendment concerns around losing your firearms. Um, and so, you know, there's this real dynamic in, of fear uh, where if you go see a mental health practitioner, you know, that person you know, can have the power 
to take away your firearms um, with, with um, you know, questionable due process. And so what Walk the Talk America does is educate these mental health practitioners, help them understand gun owners' concerns, and, and make sure that you know, our Second Amendment rights stay intact so you know, those who need mental health services can get them without fear of losing their constitutional rights. Right. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What this hundred thousand dollars that that you're trying to raise? What what exactly is that going to go towards? Which programs at, at Walk and Talk America? Yeah, the hundred thousand dollars that we raise will go to the general operations of Walk and Talk America and help them create more educational content. So one thing that's been um, was very cool to see about three years ago. Um, I was in San Francisco where I live. And there was a mental health uh, conference, right? So you had 150 mental health practitioners meeting for uh, an educational conference. And there was a section where uh, firearms industry professionals were educating uh, and, and talking to mental health practitioners about guns, about gun culture, and some of the concerns that we have around, you know, potentially losing your, your firearms if a uh, mental health practitioner deems you to be, uh, you know, a, a, a concern, right, a threat to yourself or to others. And, you know, these 150 mental health practitioners, right, that um, were, were talking to Walk the Talk America, they were uh, taking classes, right, continuing education classes that, that, that are put together by WTTA. You know, these practitioners were telling us, wow, like, this was such an incredible learning experience. Uh, these mental health practitioners, they did not understand some of the sensitivities around talking about firearms with, with gun owners and, you know, not to jump to conclusions, right? That just because, you know, you are having uh, some mental health challenges and you happen to own a firearm, well, those aren't necessarily connected, right? Just because you own a firearm doesn't make you, you know, more likely to harm yourself or others, which is an incorrect assumption, that a lot of these mental health practitioners had. So that's just one example of how Walk the Talk America, right, is you know taking money that that is raised by and, and helps them create more educational content and deliver these educational courses to the frontline mental health community. Right, and so one of the things they'll do with with the money that that you're trying to raise is, is improve these programs that they have, improve these this network that they're trying to build with with mental health professionals. Um, you know, trying to sort of, I guess, enlighten them on on how a lot of gun owners approach this issue, because I think you uh, you got at this point a little bit earlier. But one of the challenges there is that sometimes gun owners will will skip out on taking like mental health uh, uh, resources or going to a physician, you know, a psychiatrist or somebody like that out of fear that they're going to lose their their firearms because of it, right? Exactly right. And so Walk the Talk America is helping reduce the barriers to accessing mental health services and resources. And, you know, a big part of what Walk the Talk does is, is just help educate not just these frontline health um, you know, practitioners, but also gun owners. Right. And so, you know, there are ways that you, know, you can uh, if, if you are having a mental health crisis, for example, you know, there are uh, practical things that we can do with our firearms, uh, such as, hey, talk to a friend, right, or a family member, and you can ask them, hey, you know, I'm going through a rough time. Would you mind temporarily hold, on, you know, hold would you mind temporarily holding on to my guns, right? And the idea there is, is to create some time and distance, right, away from uh, any potential harmful um, harmful items, you know, and it's not just firearms, right? It's it's edged weapons, it's prescription medication, it's it's you know poisonous, uh, you know, materials as well. Um, and you know, for I, I've been working in the suicide prevention space for about ten years now, um, and I've learned a lot, and I continue to learn a lot about the space. Um, you know, and to be very frank, I, I came from a place where I always thought, oh, well, if, if somebody wants to take their own life, that there's not much that we can do about it, that we should right, let people live their lives the way they want to live them and just sort of let it happen. But I've learned that for a lot of folks who want to you know, take their lives, uh, oftentimes it's, uh, it's something that if you can interrupt 
that thought, right, that the suicidal ideations or if and or if you can provide right, the support that they need, that you can actually prevent a suicide from taking place. And and just that simple fact, right, that we as individuals are very empowered, right, uh, to, to help provide support for those of our friends, family and coworkers you know, who are in need and uh, being a gun owner is a sort of a, another layer, um, another lens, right, to, to look at mental health. Um, and so, you know, I, I like to think that Americans, right, we, we all want to do the best thing, right, to do the right thing. And if somebody is struggling, this means for me is like we want to get that person help. And Walk the Talk America is doing uh, incredible things, right, to um, encourage people to talk about any mental health challenges that they may have. And again, connecting um, people to those mental health resources and then on the mental health you know, therapist, you know, frontline, um, you know, uh, folks make sure that they're able to adequately and effectively, right, provide treatment to those of us who may need those services. Right. So it's not, it's not just a one, uh, one, one way approach here. You're not just trying to teach mental health professionals about gun owners. You're also trying to teach gun owners about how to, uh, you know, off ramp somebody potentially who's having si suicidal ideations, who uh, may want to harm themselves, uh, you know, trying to uh, teach them best practices to help that person. That That's another aspect of this, right? Exactly. And, um, you know, I, I got into... I mean, there's a couple of programs, sorry, there's a couple of programs that are in the, the WTTA uh, space that focus on, you know, different areas of, of the firearms community, right? There's, there's a program for instructors, there's a program for, for gun store owners, right? Is that, that's my understanding of it at least. Is that right? Exactly. Right. So within the gun owning space, right, there's uh, right. There's non-gun owners. And then within gun owners, there are gun shops uh, and, and gun ranges and also manufacturers. And so for, for gun shops and gun ranges, uh, a lot of this is about, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, identify somebody who, um, you know, might be suicidal? There's a lot of ranges, right, that, that see this happen where somebody comes um, and they rent a firearm and they end up using it to take their own life at the range. Um, it, it's a very traumatic experience you know, for everybody involved. And um, uh, a number of years ago, I went to a, um, a symposium uh, for gun shop owners on suicide prevention and heard, you know, these firsthand testimonials from gun shop owners who were just, they, they told how, you know, these stories, these, these, you know, terrible stories about um, customers who came in and took their own lives using, you know, firearms that the gun shop had either sold them or, or rented them. Um, and they were talking, these gun owners, uh, the gun shop owners were talking about how, how happy they were, though, that this topic is being more openly discussed in the firearms industry, that there are, there are things that we can do as gun owners, as gun shop and, and gun range owners to train uh, not just uh, the staff, right, but just gun owners in general around like, what are the some of the signs around, you know, suicide, suicidal ideation? And then again, like, what are some of these uh, tactical steps, right, that uh, if you're a gun store employee, right, how do you how do you handle uh, that particular issue? Um, and then on the manufacturer's side, one exciting thing that WTTA is doing is helping uh, provide this educational material right in their products and provide that to to, to customers. So, for example, um, Rock Island like when Armory, you go and buy a gun, yeah. So Rock Island Armory on their ammunition boxes and uh, on a number of if you purchase a firearm, there is a little either information card or a QR code on the side of the ammunition box with a little, you know, quick note that says, hey, you're right, if you want free mental health services from Walk the Talk America, uh, or free mental health screening rather from Walk the Talk, scan this QR code, takes you to WTTA.org, right? And, and that's a, a very simple uh, and very effective way, right, to, to deliver this educational material. And more, uh, more and more um, uh, manufacturers, 
in the firearms industry are, are getting involved with Walk with Talk America. So it's, it's very exciting to see, again, this, this topic of both mental health and, and suicide prevention, you know, come out of the shadows, right? And more and more, you know, people uh, as individuals, but also corporations and, and industry, you know, we're, we're not just talking about it, but we're actually doing something about this to reduce the amount of, of deaths that we see due to a firearm in our country. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, gun suicides are the leading cause of, uh, you know, the, the most common type of gun death is, is uh, suicide by fire. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and yeah, 10 years ago, and, and you, when I got into mm-hmm. the suicide prevention field, it was because of that fact right there, right? That, two, you know, two thirds of firearms mm-hmm. deaths are suicides. And 10 years ago, right. I looked around in the firearms industry and I, I looked, oh, hey, you know, is this something we talk about? And nobody was talking about this, right? We were so focused on assault weapons and all the magazine capacity and all the gun control initiatives, right? That are trying to be, you know, crammed down our throats and we're, we're, we're fighting a multi-front battle on the gun control side of things. Um, but that's right, one third, right, of, of the problem. And so this two thirds of suicides, you know, by firearm, no one was talking about it. So I said, okay, uh, I want to be a part of the solution and help make our country, you know, safer, stronger, and healthier, and and supporting organizations like Walk the Talk America. Yeah, yeah, and um, to, you know, to get a little bit philosophical here for a moment, um, you know, is that something you view as a responsibility of the industry or a responsibility of the gun owning community to to try and address this issue? Um, head on to get more involved like like you're talking about uh yeah i i I think we all have just it's really just a moral and ethical responsibility and and i think this isn't just it's not a burden just for the firearms industry or for the gun community i mean this is this is really about everybody should should be aware and involved on some level but um i guess i also think about it this way you know i i think the solution for firearms issues and problems is most it's best for the solutions to come from within our industry and within our community because right it's like i'm a i'm a i'm a gun owner i'm a competitive shooter right i know guns i know gun owners um and so i'd rather that the solution come from within our community versus the government or some external entity like an anti-gun organization trying to come in and either dictate or mandate through law or through some other kind of uh, social force um, and, and try and, you know, put their will, uh, exert their will on, on gun owners. And, and so Walk the Talk America and, 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 you know, my personal approach is very much about education, not legislation, and to empower people with the tools and the knowledge around you know, what to do, right? Uh, if, if, if you know, or you, if you yourself, right, are going through uh, a mental health crisis. And so uh, I'm, I'm very uh, heartened to see the firearms industry and to see, uh, you know, so many gun owners uh, rally behind this cause. Um, and it's an area where I think there's way more mutual, like, you know, mutual agreement and common ground around you know potential solutions so instead of um us you know kind of all mm-hmm. dug in in our heels and some of these other gun control measures you know i'm i'm, uh, I'm confident that mental health and suicide prevention again these are areas of uh, more more common ground and, and we can uh, actually make a, a real difference in this field so so you know in your mind you view this as i guess a, an alternative to things like red flag laws or you know, legislative solutions like you you just alluded to there. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, the, the, there are so many uh, Americans in particular, you know, anti-gun organizations that want to legislate these solutions like red flag laws and um, right, which only serve to scare more people away from from seeking and getting mental health services. And, you know, I, I come from a place where, look, you know, if 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 you provide the information and education out there and let people know that they have a choice, right? That they have very good viable choices and and great resources out there that can help address 
you know, mental health and, and, and suicide prevention, that we don't have to have, you know, the government or external forces come in and uh, force solutions on us that, that may not be appropriate, right, for, for, for too many people. So, you know, Walk the Talk America is very much about bridging this gap between gun owners and mental health services and also making sure that our Second Amendment rights are protected and, and, and defended, right, in the, in the entire process. Because I believe that we can retain our constitutional rights uh, and, and also, right, keep our firearms and also you know, keep our mental health, right, and be, be happy and healthy and safe. Um, but it doesn't just happen, right? This, you know, me tackling mental health requires action, right? It requires action on the individual right to, to to right go through go through treatment go through um, therapy it, it, it takes support right it takes action by the friends and family right of those yeah. who are in need right we yeah, not are easy. each other's support networks yeah it's certainly right it's not the government certainly not That's an easy, support network. easy thing there's no real easy solution to this problem right um and and uh and i don't think walk the talk america pretends that there's an easy solution right um, and, and, uh, you know, getting back to this sort of practical side of this, um, these programs. So, so, you know, in addition to, um, uh, you know, some of the things we've already talked about, you know, walk and talk America, one, one key thing about it, especially when we're talking about raising money or giving your money to a group is that it, it actually is a charity. Like it's a formal charity. It's a 501 C three. Not that that means there's no possibility for your money to be misused, but uh, I think it, it sets a bit of a higher bar. They have to report um, their their financials to uh, the federal government every year to maintain their nonprofit status. And uh, and they also have a list of programs that they do, including, as you mentioned, one of the ones we haven't really talked a lot about yet is this free mental health screening. You mentioned that this part of uh, some of the stuff they've done with the industry of, of getting the word out about this. But what does that health, mental health screening actually, you know, look like in practice? Because I, I want to make sure people understand the the practical side of what where their money would go to if they were uh, going to give to to this fundraiser. Yeah, great question. So the free mental health screening is right. You just simply go to the WTTA.org website and it's free and anonymous, right? So you take a series, uh, it's a very quick questionnaire, and uh, depending on the answers that you provide, which are all anonymous, right? There's zero tracking of, of any uh, personal information. Right? And depending on the answers that you provide to the free mental health screening, uh, various uh, information and resources, right, will, will be presented to you. Um, so you can take the next steps, right? If you so choose, right? The, yeah, Walk the Talk America, um, it's, it's um, you know, they're not collecting information about anybody. Um, it's simply a tool to help you self-screen, right? It's just you're answering questions, right? And you can answer the questions however you want, right? And I mean, if you're curious, right, you can just like answer the questions and kind of see uh, the different uh, resources, the resources and answers that come up. Um, but yeah, there's no personal information that's collected. It's a free anonymous mental health screening. And again, the answers will provide uh, resources, right, that the user can opt to uh, utilize or not, right, at the end of the screening. Yeah, yeah. And they also have a, a database of mental health professionals that they have, uh, you know, directly work with. Is that how that that works as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, if you if you want to try and uh, find a mental health, uh, you know, a professional uh, near you, yeah, there's uh, connections to to resources uh, and information, right, to, to help you find someone that might be a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. Right. And and you know, now I was I'm hoping maybe we could have a little bit more of a personal conversation on on this topic. It's not easy to do, right? But uh, but it's something that we've done on the show in the past. I've talked about uh, a friend of mine who. Um, who unfortunately committed suicide with, with a firearm or, um, and, and, you know, that's something that's deeply affected me personally, uh, over the years. And, and I wonder, wondering if you could give us uh, maybe a little bit of your personal story of why this became an issue that you decided to be at the forefront of. 
Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I first got into the space mostly just because of the data, right? And the numbers that I saw. Mm -hmm. But, you know, shortly after I got into the suicide prevention space, I ended up losing, uh, I mean, there's the same same mutual friend of ours. Right. His name's Bob Owens. Right. He was, you know, editor of, uh, of Bearing Arms. Not that um, you, not that you and, need to lose somebody uh, to suicide to care about this issue or anything, but... I but, uh, you know, I'm always interested in, in what sort of motivates somebody to, to uh, take on something like this because it can be difficult, right? I mean, even when you start talking about this issue publicly, if you have any kind of following, you can even get people who are then coming to you with um, looking for help on the, on the topic. And that that's, uh, that's, can be a very difficult thing to deal with as well. So yeah, it's, it's interesting what you know, part of my. Yeah, I mean, a big part of my professional background is I, I came from the customer support world. And a big driver of why I loved customer support is because it is all about helping people. And that's always been a key focus for me in my career uh, and also in my philanthropy and community services is very focused on, you know, how do I help people um, either directly or right to give people um, the confidence to, you know, either, uh, hey, you know, admit that you have a problem and you need to go seek help and hey, and that's okay, right? That's very okay. Uh, everybody has low points, right, in, in their life. And if, if you need to find help, uh, help is there. And I think there's, um, you know, I've, I've thankfully only had a, a few, um, you know, friends and acquaintances who have taken their lives, um, you know, due to, you know, due to suicide. Um, but there's all this collateral damage, right, that that happens, right? Those of us who are, uh, you know, kind of, quote, left behind, if you will. Um, and so I always think about, you know, how do we prevent that, right? How do we prevent, um, you know, someone from uh, from taking their lives? And, and oftentimes it's about providing that help, right? It's 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 um, it's about being there, right, for your friends, for your loved ones um, and and having the courage to ask someone, Hey, are you okay? Right? Like that simple question of, Hey, or how are you doing? Like, are you doing okay? Um, right. That can, that can really be such a meaningful um, question uh, that gives the other person, right. The kind of either permission or like freedom um, to, to talk about whatever their, their problems are. And then, right. You can provide uh, right. That kind of support, right. That for, for the people that, that you love and the people that you, you want to, you know, that you want to have, uh, have around. Yeah. And you know, it's uh, one thing that strikes me about, about you and, and your work in this area is it's, it's somewhat similar to some of the other things you've done in kind of, uh, breaking through stereotypes, uh, in, in the gun community or, or long held, like, uh, you know, it seems to me that in, 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 talking about mental health and and talking about suicide and, and talking about suicidal ideation is is not something, as you mentioned earlier, that was uh, is used to be a very common thing to do, and, or used to be something. You know, talking about your feelings if you're a guy and you own guns, like this is like not a macho thing to do, right? And um, and, and so you know, it's not an easy thing to try and change that that culture that exists. Uh, around the, this topic, right? And, and you know, but it, it's the same thing I think with a lot of other things that you've done uh, that you've taken on with LGBTQ issues in the gun industry, or or uh, you know, uh, Asian American uh, activism as well. It, do you see these things as fitting together, or how do you uh, how do you look at this particular challenge um, in, in regards to what you've done with the rest of your career? Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a good observation that you've you've made right with my advocacy both in the LGBT and Asian American um, spaces, right, and, and helping provide help and support there, right, in these two demographic these other two demographics, right, that are historically um, you know underrepresented in the in the gun community, um, and you know in the LGBT space, for example, right, there are some very unique challenges um, that you know that I'm gay, and so you're right, gay people face. Um, a particular type of challenge uh, and transgender uh, you know, Americans face a whole different you know, problem um, when firearms for for uh, for that demographic are uh, the great equalizer like they are for for many other uh, demographics as well. And for Asian Americans, you know, we've been typically a very quiet 
uh, demographic, especially when it comes to constitutional rights. But the pandemic, right, really changed the game, you know, for 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 many, many, many Asian Americans. And uh, there are a lot more. Uh, we saw 43 percent year over year increase of first time Asian American gun ownership, right, which was unprecedented. Um, and so for me, you know, now with, with my suicide prevention work, um, you know, it, you know, with that work in my portfolio, it's it's very much about. Um, yeah, I, I really like shining the light on on either communities, topics, and issues that I think are important but aren't being talked about enough. So that's mm. uh, I think a very uh, constant um, theme and space that I, I find myself in is that I want to shine this light, you know, on on communities and people that uh, historically have not gotten as much support or help as um, as they may either they need or they want. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I, coming from a customer support background, um, I, I get a lot of satisfaction, right, out of making sure that people get the help that yeah. they need. Yeah, no, yeah. From talking with you and, and other Asian American gun owners and, and activists in the past, it seems like uh, a lot of Asian Americans don't like to talk about guns or, or be around guns, like culturally. And, um, and then a lot of gun owners don't like to talk about suicide or bring up mental health. Uh, and so you here are at the center of both of these things, uh, trying, trying to get people to do exactly that. Um, and, and it's, it's pretty fascinating to see, uh, your, your efforts, uh, on both of those fronts. Yeah. And this is the kind of work that is going to take decades and, and generations, right? You, you don't, you don't take taboo subjects and, you know, they don't, they don't become, you know, uh, commonplace overnight, you know, if, if you look at the the threat of LGBT rights in our country over the decades, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it took us a very, very long time just to get to marriage equality, right, in 2015. Um, but but there's real change, right, that's happening. But it, it's it's going to take uh, a very long term approach, right, for uh, all of these issues, right, whether it's increasing, you know, LGBT and Asian uh, support of the Second Amendment and, and you know, for, for gun rights um, or, right, making it um, more acceptable, right, and easy to talk about suicide and suicide prevention. Um, and like anything else, uh, we just have to keep at it, right? And we have to, and it, it's got to be more than just one person, right? And thankfully, um, right, there's, it's not just me, there's, there's many, many other advocates in the space who are are working on all of these issues, and uh, I'm very happy and proud to to work with and partner with many of them and walk the talk America and this hundred thousand dollar fundraising campaign that that we're uh, that I'm you know helping uh, promote and, and put on is uh, you know one of uh, many exciting things that uh, that I love being involved in because we're we're really seeing the gun gun industry rally around this uh, fundraising campaign, and I'm very confident. By the end on May 8th, that will hit that $100,000 goal. Yeah. And so you have seen over these last 10 years that you've been working uh, on this issue, uh, uh, progress. You've, you've seen movement from the industry, from gun owners generally. Is that is that how you feel at this point? Like, are you Absolutely. You know, I, I look back. I look back, you know, when I started in the field 10 years ago, um, no one was talking about this. And. Um, I approached the folks at the National Shooting Sports Foundation, uh, or otherwise known as the NSSF, and, and talked to them about, hey, like, is this something that we should be talking about? And if so, right, would, would you, the NSSF, you know, want to take this on? Um, and we've seen some incredible movement come out of the gun industry, you know, partnerships with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, partnerships with the Department of Veterans Affairs, more formal programming. Right, joint programming that has come right, from uh, from this coalition of right NSSF, the Veterans Affairs Administration, and the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Uh, I'm a part of uh, an annual roundtable um, that is uh, focused on right suicide prevention and you know being a part of the firearms industry and helping the firearms industry navigate through through this whole experience has been. Very rewarding. Um, there's, you know, I've, I've made contacts that I never, you know, never, I never thought I'd be working with, you know, suicide prevention leaders 
I never thought I'd be working with the VA because I'm not a, I'm not a veteran, right? But I'm I'm working with you know Veterans Affairs, you know administrators and, and leadership to make a difference, right? To make sure you know on the veteran side of things, you know a large uh, portion uh, of those who take their lives uh, with firearms are, are veterans, right? Mm. And these you know yeah. and th- these are the folks that we should be you know helping. Uh, tremendously because right many of them have have um, you know made uh, huge sacrifices right to defend our country right to keep us safe and right mm. the least that we can do for for veterans who are in need is is for us as a community right and as a country to provide them with the support whether it's mental health services or or other you know medical services um, and so uh, there's been tremendous uh, a ground shift over the past 10 years and how the, the gun community um, and how I, I, how I would say even just the, um, the suicide prevention community in general uh, approaches this issue. And, and because the example I'm, I'm getting at here is the suicide prevention field, right? 10 years ago, they were not talking to the gun industry, right, about this problem. Like the suicide prevention advocates used to just you know, think in their own little bubble, like, how can we talk to gun owners when, you know, they they finally realized, hey, like, well, suicide prevention advocates, like they're suicide prevention specialists, but they're not gun specialists, right? And they're, they're not supposed to be, right? They don't, they're not supposed to know how to shoot a gun or they don't, they don't study Second Amendment rights. So they don't really focus on that. But obviously the firearms industry and the gun community, right? We're the, we're the specialists, on guns, right? And so it's been incredible to see these partnerships being forged, right? Bringing topical specialists, leaders and experts in both fields come together to mutually try and solve this challenge of reducing the amount of suicides by firearms that we see in our country. So I'm, we, we've made incredible progress uh, over the past 10 years. I think the next 10 years, are going to be great. And uh, I'm really happy that Walk the Talk America has had a front seat, you know, at the table where I'm, I'm putting my reputation and also my money, you know, towards an organization um, in Walk the Talk America that I, I've seen the work that they've done. And uh, I believe in it. Uh, I believe in, um, you know, the, the founder, co-founder, Mike Sodini. Um, it just, it's been so inspiring and impressive to see the work that that he and the Walk the Talk America team has done over the years and uh, I want to support them and and more years to come. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And, uh, you know, I imagine as much as progress has been made, you do still see room for more. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe a program like the free gun lock program that NSSF does where new, new gun, every new gun that's sold comes with a gun lock. Would you see maybe hope for something like that with mental health uh, down the line? I mean, it sounds like there's already some, efforts in that direction. You mentioned Rock Island Armory handing out information with their products. Um, you know, is that something you, you hope to see in the future, maybe? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, for, so what does success for me look like here? I mean, at a high level, I would love to see, you know, not just the number of, of uh, you know, I'd love to see the number of suicides, right, by firearm, you know, get reduced, you know, right. in, in our country. I mean, that's, that's really the goal, the, right? That's the ultimate goal in D, right? We want to save lives. And again, we're very capable of, of doing that. Um, and so part of this is, you know, I would love for one day, right, that uh, we, we would be in a world where everybody knows uh, about mental health resources, right? Whether it's through Walk the Talk America or, or you know, maybe your work offers, you know, uh, mental health support. You know, my, my previous employer, um, we would get, um, I think it was like 18 free one hour mental health sessions every year, right? That was just a part of our uh, healthcare package, right? That we got through through work. And so I would love for people to at least be aware, right? Of the resources that are available to them, um, right? Whether it's through work, Walk the Talk America, maybe you are right part of, uh, you know, you have, you're part of the VA system, um, right? And, and so that awareness, right? that education of knowing, hey, if I or someone I know and love is going through a mental health crisis, that I know what to do, right? That I would love to see a place where uh, everyone's more comfortable 
right? Talking about any challenges that they may be facing in their life, right? That they're not living in fear or shame, right? Or, right, if you're, if you're a guy, right, you, you know, you don't, I hope to see, you know, more guys not be afraid of, uh, you know, being made fun of by their friends, right? If they, um, you know, want to talk about something that's challenging in their lives, right? I would, I would like to see more guys, right? Like, sure, I right, talk about your problems and like, see your friends rally around you, right? Mm -hmm. And support you yeah. through your hard times. So that's Absolutely. what I would eventually love to see, right? That this is, um, you know, for those of us who, who love America, right? Our country is founded on freedom. And, you know, for me, a big part of that freedom is that we should have the, the courage and, and the confidence to talk about, you know, things like really hard issues, right? Like we don't truly live in a free country unless you, you feel free and safe to right, talk about issues, whether they're right, your, your own issues um, or your, your community's issues. But on a mental health perspective, you know, I, I think there's, there's, there's just so many Americans who I think feel trapped in their own minds, right? They, they are, you know, suffering, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and they don't have anyone, yeah. they feel like they don't have anybody to talk to that they, you know, don't know what resources might be out there for them. Um, and so I'd love to, again, have to see us get to a place where um, people know, right, that there are, there are individuals um, like me and, and others who were supporting Walk the Talk America and, and in general, right, supporting, uh, you know, mental health awareness, right, that, that we care, right, we care, we're, 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 we're here, right, we're here to support, um, you know, folks who, who need and, and want yeah. that help. And uh, I hope others will join me in this Walk the Talk America uh, fundraising challenge and, yeah, help us get to that $100,000 goal by May 8th. Right, right. And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you're putting, I think it's $5,000 in as, as one of the first donors for this, this fundraising campaign. Uh, people that goes to match donations from other people. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, I'll be matching donations of $500 or less. Um, and so, you know, right, you donate $500, that I'll, I'll turn that into $1,000 total. And so I'll be donating uh, up to $5,000 of, of my own money. All right. And this is to uh, encourage um, you know, uh, everyone to donate, right? It doesn't matter if it's $5, right? I'll turn $5 into 10, uh, all the way up to $500, right? Turn that into a thousand. Um, but we've also got some uh, corporate donors um, that are weighing in. Uh, and in fact, not too long ago, uh, a, a distributor called Lipsy's they just donated twenty five thousand uh, dollars, and so uh, that's incredibly exciting. That's that's putting us right around uh, like twenty seven thousand um, dollars, and this is only day two, right, of the fundraising challenge. So we are we're 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 getting there. Um, I'm hoping that other corporations uh, will also dive in, but my my matching donation of five thousand dollars, right, is really uh, to encourage. Uh, individual donors, and I'm only uh, matching individual donors, um, you know, again, $500 or less. Yeah, WTTA.org slash fundraiser is the link for anybody that wants to go donate. All right, wonderful. Well, look, we appreciate you coming on the show and, and telling us about the fundraiser and giving us your perspective on, on this very important issue. Uh, and hopefully we can have you back on in the future. Uh, hopefully the the fundraiser works and you get to that hundred thousand dollar goal and maybe even beyond it. Uh, I guess that you said it's May 8th is the, the end of the, of the, uh, event, right? Correct. Yeah. Th thanks um, for having me on, um, walk the talk. America is an organization that I wholeheartedly support. And uh, I hope, uh, listeners will do, you know, do, do some research, WTTA.org. And, uh, if you feel so inclined to support mental health, you know, for America, you know, please head over to WTTA.org slash fundraiser and uh, help us hit that $100,000 goal by May 8th. Great, great. All right. Well, that's all we've got for you guys this week. Um, if you enjoy what we do here at The Reload, you can head over and sign up for our free newsletter today to keep up to date with what's going on with guns in America, or you can buy a membership to get exclusive access to hundreds of pieces of analysis and stories that you will not find anywhere else. You will, of course, get early access to this here podcast and the opportunity to appear on the show as well, if you want. Uh, and your money, of course, will help fund our reporting to keep this 
show operating and uh, to keep our reports coming. So very important work uh, that we, we try to bring you the, the best firearms journalism we can from a sober, serious perspective that stands out a bit from uh, perhaps everyone else out there on any side that you look at. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested, head over to reload.com and, and sign up today. That's all we've got for you guys. We will see you guys again real soon.